Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to wire up some electric cooling fans. Today, we're gonna to be installing and wiring up some electric cooling fans in my GTI. If you wanna know why I decided to run with this particular wiring setup, I actually did a whole nother video explaining and walking you through the wiring diagram, how to figure out how your fans work and how I figured out how I wanted these to work. I'll be sure to link that up in the quarters as well as down in the description. Also, we're gonna be taping up the harness. If you wanna learn how to do that, I've done a video on that that I will also link up for you guys as well. There are multiple ways to connect these wires. If you'd like to use solder and heat shrink, go that route if that's the route you'd like. In this video, we're going to be using crimp connectors that have the heat shrink built onto them. This is the Volkswagen Audi preferred method for wiring repair. It's also the parts that I had laying around, so this is the route that I'm going to go. The tools you'll need for this job will be a pair of wire cutters, wire strippers, wire crimpers, butt connectors, a roll of wiring harness tape, and possibly some heat shrink tubing. And of course, at the end of this video, we're going to have to test our fans and make sure they work. So I'm gonna be showing you how to jump the thermal switch and power up the fans. I'm going to actually install connectors. The main reason I'm doing this is from a serviceability standpoint. So if I wanna pull the fan shroud out, I just have to simply disconnect it. As far as which side goes where, doesn't really matter. But I am going to wire up both fans exactly the same. That way if I have any issues with cooling, I can simply disconnect them and swap the fans and see if one way works better than the other. We'll go ahead and start by stripping some sheathing off of this wire. We want to be careful not to cut all the way through. Once we have the sheathing stripped off the wire, we can go ahead and grab our wire connector, slide it on, and then we use our crimpers to go ahead and crimp it. And just to make sure we did a good job, give it a pull, and we're good to go. Now, if we were to put the other butt connector right next to it, it would actually bulk up our loom quite a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually stagger them cut this wire a little bit further back so that they're not next to each other, that'll make our harness look a little nicer. The only reason to do that, truthfully, is so that your harness looks a little nicer. We'll go ahead, cut it there, cut it a little further back, and strip it to about there. We'll take our other crimp connector, put it on, double check, I could cut it a little bit further back, but I think that'll be good enough for me. Now it's time to attach this end to the fans. The important thing here is to make sure you get the polarity correct. If we wire this fan backwards, we're going to create a push fan instead of a pull fan. and We want air pulled through the radiator the way we're going to have it installed. To start off, we'll simply cut the terminal ends. Then I'm going to pull this sheathing off. Now, in the case of this fan and most other wiring, the black wire is ground and the blue wire is going to be power. For our VW style connector, the brown wire is going to be ground and the red wire is going to be power. The color of the wire sheathing is different, but that does not matter at all. That is simply for identification purposes. So for us, we're just going to go ahead and make sure that we wire it in properly. So it's going to look something like that. Just like we did with the other side, we'll start by stripping the sheathing off. Now we had a shorter brown wire on the connector, which means we're gonna have a longer black wire on the fan. Now that we have the ground wire hooked up, we'll go ahead and hook the power wire up. Remember, because we staggered it, we need to cut a little more off the power side than we did off the ground side. Go ahead and put that in our connector and give it a crimp. There we go. Now, you'll notice I didn't put the sheathing back on. That's not really that big of a deal. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll just tape it up and make it look nice, and then it'll actually match the rest of our wiring harness. Our last step is gonna be to heat and shrink. So there we go, one properly wired up connector. Next, go ahead and do the other side.
Now that we got the wiring all done, time to go ahead and taper up. Now we're going to be working on the car side and rather than just simply snipping this connector end off and throwing it in the trash, I wanna open this up and see if maybe there's a better place to splice in our connectors. Now, this is where we're going to need our wiring diagram to make sure that we get this wired properly. If you didn't have a wiring diagram, this would actually be still pretty easy to figure out what goes where. Because the resistor is built in the fan, so the higher the speed, the more current draw there is going to be, and then, of course, the bigger the wire. In this case, this is going to be our first speed fan, so I'm going to put one white dot. Then our second speed fan is going to be this red and black wire, so we're going to put two marks on it. And then our third speed is going to, of course, be the red and green, so we're going to put three, three lines on it. And then as with most VW wiring diagrams, the brown wire is going to be ground. So I'm not going to put anything on there because I think we're just going to use this for both grounds for the fans. Something else I like to do is cut the harness in a way that it makes it easier to do a repair. If you cut it flush right here, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging to make a repair. So what we can do is we can make a cut back here. And that gives us more than enough room to add a butt connector or solder it if we ever wanted to put the stock connector back on. All right, let's go ahead and cut our connector off. Speed one, ground, three, and two. Now the way I have this set up is that we're going to use one fan for speed one, and then the second fan for speeds two and three, which means that this is gonna go to one connector, and this is gonna go to the other connector. So let's start off with speed one. For the ground side, we're gonna to have to get a little creative because we actually want to have two wires coming off of this one singular wire. And it's also considerably bigger than my wire strippers will allow for. So we're gonna to switch to this style. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of these bigger wire butt connectors, slide it down. We need to use the yellow dot on our crimpers. And now what we'll do is we'll splice two wires into this one so they can just share the ground connection. For the fan side, we'll go ahead and strip that. And now I'm not gonna connect this one to the ground yet, but I am gonna go ahead and do the power side. Next, let's go ahead and strip the sheathing on our other connector. Now, rather than like really twisting these up, we just kind of want to set them together, maybe give them just a slight, slight twist. Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna put them right into the larger butt connector. Get them in there really good. Hold them tight while you crimp this connection. Where ground is taken care of, our low speed is taken care of, we just need to join these two to this one. Of course, we'll start by stripping the wiring. Let's do some test fitting of this connector. Well, that seems to fit pretty well. Let's cramp it down, see if it holds. So next I'm gonna take this wire end and put it in this connector. And if I do that, it'll work just fine. The only issue is our harness will be a little weird and wonky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually cut this down and we're gonna just kind of loop it back like this.
All right, guys, there we have it. We're wired up. Now it's time to heat shrink this, clean it up a little bit, and we'll be good to go. After some reflection, I think I'm going to actually go back and add some heat shrink to these connections. Not necessary, just one extra little bit of safety measure. Now this is some pretty high test heat shrink. It's actually meant to shrink around washer fluid lines. So even though it's this big, it shrinks down really, really tiny. Slide one end through, slide the other end through. Go ahead and drop our connector pins back in. Let's go ahead and take our heat shrink, slide it down our wire. Before we get the entire car put back together, we want to do a quick test drive of our fans. We're going to take our plugs. We are going to plug them in. The right way to test these would be to turn the air conditioning on, to get the car all the way up to temp, and make sure that everybody's happy and is functioning properly. But since we still have a lot to put back together, I'm going to show you guys a really quick cheat for testing these fans. This is a big moment. I haven't had the battery hooked up in a really long time in this car. And the ground side. So this guy right here is the thermal switch that goes into the radiator. And what we can do is we can simply jump it to test at least two of our fan speeds. So for speed one, we're gonna jump pins one and two. And then for fan speed two, we're gonna jump the other two pins. And since the GTI is up and running, the maiden voyage has happened. The fans have been properly tested in the system that they are functioning in. Fan control module works, both fans work, thermal switch works, so everything is just fine. If you guys have questions or comments about today's show, you know what to do. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Always appreciate that. Don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube or over on the blog at humblemechanic.com. If you want exclusive content discounts you can't get anywhere else, to places like Sonic Pools, which we use today, MT Knives, Eurowise, Eastwood, and more, check out the crew membership program. You can also throw some support, a buck or two if you'd like, over on the Patreon, as well as using my Amazon affiliate link. That's the most freestest way you guys can help support the show, and I'll have links to some of the things we use on Amazon down below in the description. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course on Snapchat. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hey, good luck with your fan wiring if you need it, and I will see you next time.